African Pride. What's up, brother? What up, Tariq? I'm good, African Pride. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I, I, I see that you hold the Seminoles in high regard. I but, really but respectfully, aren't they fleers like us? How so? They fled to a different country. Well, they, they went down to Mexico and they were going back and forth. Some of them went down to Mexico. Um, a lot of them actually form towns all over Oklahoma. So what are you talking about? No, I'm saying they fled to Florida, right? They fled to Florida? Yeah, Florida was a different country at the time. Yeah, it was um, Spain. It was owned by Spain at the time. And they went down to Florida and joined forces with other people and fought and beat the United States Army. So they're not like you. They're not like you at all. Y'all didn't go up against a mighty army and make them come up with a treaty y'all didn't do that y'all fled y'all came to chill up under us so we're different right i mean fleeing is fleeing no is. Uh, oh, no 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 fleeing no no You're fleeing and not fighting back that ain't that's something different um moving i mean we fought no, in africa so i mean that's no that's, going somewhere and getting reinforcements so that you can get with other people so that you can fight better. That's different, sir. We didn't get reinforcements. We we whooped y'all European fled. ass. Y'all fled. Y'all fled, sir. You. But fled. I'm saying we whooped European ass, though. How? In the, in the span of 50 years, we beat Italy, Egypt twice, and the Confederate Army. And where are you from? What country are you talking about? I'm Habesha. Oh, so Somali. You're Somali, yeah? Fuck no. We don't fuck with Somalis. I'm I'm Habesha. Is it Ethiopia? I'm Habesha. What what country is that? It's in the Horn. Okay. Why are you being vague about it? Is it Somaliland? Is it Ethiopia? Which one is it? Somalis are not Habesha. We we're not Somalis. So what what country is it? I'm a tribe. We don't. I'm not talking about a country. I'm talking about a country, sir. What country did your people come from? Technically, we were, we were under Ethiopia, so yeah, yeah right. That, that, that's when you what said I'm Italy, saying. When you said Italy, yeah. When you said beat Italy, yeah, you beat Italy because the foundation of Black Americans too. That's right? not true, man. You keep changing history, bro. Stop doing I'm that. About changing history because uh, African uh, Black FBAs came came over the. Um, during right before the second invasion, not during the, not when we whooped their ass. Well, you're talking about Menelik. Okay, Menelik did his thing. Yeah, Menelik did his thing in the 1800s. No, and, and in 1932, Haile Selassie gave FBA 700 acres of land in um, Hara region, uh -huh. and uh, thank as a as a thank you for helping. That's no, I mean. that was before the war. So that that land over there. The Jamaicans got that land. They started going over there when they when they set aside that land. Tariq, that's not true. What are you talking? Uh, about? Haile Selassie gave uh, Black Americans their own land in the Amhara region in 1932. In 1948, he gave Jamaicans uh, their own region in the Oromo Valley. So there's two different regions, two different times. And in 1948, when they set aside that land. That land in that was region specifically for Jamaicans. The what? That land was specifically for Jamaicans. But in 1932, that 700 acres was specifically for Black Americans, which a lot of Black Americans went down to Ethiopia and died there. What's the name of that? No, because what I'm understanding as a thank you for us um, helping them in the war, 
they set aside that land for foundational black Americans in the 1940s. So the, what you're saying doesn't sound right. What you're no, saying, that's, that's not true. Okay. I'm, I'm, giving, the, I'm giving you the real history. What's the name of the land in 1932 that you're talking about? Hold on. It was um, in the Mahara region right next to Lake Tana at the base of the Nile. Haile, Haile Selassie, 1932, gave 700 acres to FBAs. Then 10 years later, in 1948 or 15 years later, he gave Jamaicans their own land, which they're still there. Uh, matter of fact, there, there's a lot of black Americans who died there. Um, not all of them. Uh, the most famous one was uh, obviously the, the pilot, right? Who did John, his thing. John, John, John Robinson. Right, and he died wealthy in his mansion, and he got paid for that shit. Just like the, just like the 15 or 20 other FBAs who uh, lended their skills to, to help, you know what I mean? There was one um, FBA, he was a doctor, he became Holly Slice's personal doctor, and then he came down there and helped uh, I guess revamp the healthcare network, you know what I mean? And there's a bunch of other stories, right? But there was, there was two different uh, incidents. It wasn't a thank you, it was because it was a Pan-African spirit. And there was also a thank you too, because we were really pushing that line for the um, Ethiopians over here. We were standing up for them when um, they were trying to invade them. It was Tariq, you're not listening to me, bro. That was for the second invasion. But like Mussolini, it wasn't a surprise. He announced he's like, yo, we're gonna uh, get Ethiopia this time. And then Black Americans then stood up and was like, yo, you know, maybe we fuck with Ethiopians. Like, like fall back. But no, okay. Some the the area was Shashamane, and that was supposed to be designated for foundational Black Americans. And then a lot of Jamaicans went over there and got a piece of that. And the so Shash- man, you're not listening to me. Okay, I told I, you that, that was for specifically in 1948 for Jamaicans. I'm talking about 1932 in the Amhara region by Lake Tana. But the uh, the Shashamane area was supposed to be for foundation of Black Americans too. No, it was for spe- specifically for Rast- Rastafarians. Rastafarian means uh, that Rastafari is Holly Selassie's real name before he right. changed it. I know when he went to Jamaica, they said, "Okay, we're going to start worshiping you." Yeah, 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 yeah. But from what I understand from my studies, the Shashamane area was supposed to be designated for foundational Black Americans who helped out because we were lining up to help out Ethiopia so they wouldn't get invaded and colonized. No, that, that's not true. Uh, 1932 in the Mahara region, but okay. the reason why the reason why FBA is lined up for Ethiopians is because Ethiopia was a symbol of like freedom at the time. You know what I mean? During the ha- Harlem Renaissance, Ethiopia was mentioned thousands of times. You know what I mean? Plays, poems, it was even the-, the um, It was even black- the- Yeah, because we, we wanted to see them remain free. We wanted to show that we wanted to stand behind that nation keeping its freedom. That was gonna be the last place that would be colonized by the white supremacists. And we wanted to, to get that popping. Even um, the, the, and, uh, the Northern and Hub and was set the, aside for foundational black Americans. It wasn't set aside for Jamaicans. That's not true. You can't change the history, bro. I just changing. told you. I just told you. It's true. That wasn't, it was set aside for us because we were over, <laughs> we put it down for them. And Hala Selassie was giving thanks. The Jamaicans just happened to jump on over there. No, nah, you, you're, you're changing the history, bro. I'm not changing history. It was never a thank you because FBAs did nothing for Ethiopia prior to that uh, first uh, battle of Adwa where, they, where we beat the Italians. Did nothing. It was just a, at a Pan African spirit, just like how we uh, trained no, Nelson, no, Nelson, no, we trained no, Nelson Mandela and all these leaders. It was during the 1930s where it was a real Pan African spirit at the time. No, no, because in 1935, um, Robinson. He volunteered to go over there and fight for the war. He went over there and showed them how to fight uh, to use those planes, sir. What are you talking about? He didn't do anything. Yes, he did. We already had a we had an air force at the time in our own planes, Tariq. Like, I, I don't understand where you're getting this information from, dude. He showed them he showed them how to fly planes correctly and do reconnaissance and all of that. He that's why the the first airline he had something to do with that over there. The first airline in Africa. John we Martin. had our, we had our own planes fifty years before he came, so, uh, and, and I'm not trying to minimize him. He died. I mean, he died for our freedom, and I'm not trying to minimize. I'm just giving you the correct history. Okay, so if listen, listen to me. Why was he commander? They made him commander of the Ethiopian Air Force. If they were flying planes so good over there, why did they have to make a foundational Black American commander of the Ethiopian Air Force? Because of his skills. 
Ah, the, ding, 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 ding. Okay. All right. Well, they did something. If a foundational black American was the commander of the Air Force there, we did something. That was important. He wasn't a commander of the Air Force. He was commander of his own squad. Like, there was other uh, commanders, too. No, he was the commander of the Ethiopian Air Force, sir. Nah, you, you, you're doing, like, revisionist history, right? Uh, you could, uh, just because you keep saying, oh, that ain't true. No, you got to, you, no, this is very well documented. This Tariq, you just, oh, okay. just got saying that it was, the land was a thank you for FBAs. It wasn't. Yeah, it was. You just, it wasn't because Ethiopia was the, I told you, Ethiopia was, like, the symbol of freedom. Even, even during slavery and the chattel slavery, the northern hub for yeah, the underground no, railroad. No, the northern. No, no, no. You're not going to do that. Hold on. You're just not going to say, oh, that ain't true. That's just revising. No, it ain't. I want y'all to Google family. Our brother, our foundational black American, John Robinson, was the commander. They made him commander of the Air Force. This is documented. It's a book, The Tuskegee Airmen, an Illustrated History. Came out 2011. It's in that book. Just Google it. All right. Just Google what I'm saying. Now go go ahead, African Pride. Come on now, June. I just yeah. gave a book reference where people can look that up. Back in the day, Ethiopia was a symbol of freedom, right? Like even even in slavery and chattel slavery, the northern hub of the Underground Railroad was. Called well, you broke up. What happened? Go ahead. What happened? What happened? Yeah, you muted me. Uh, but I was going to say. I did mute you, but go ahead. I was saying the, the northern hub of the Underground Railroad was called the Abyssinian House. That's how much Ethiopia had an influence. Um, as far as like uh, the land, like I said, it was 1932 was given to black Americans, not as a thank you, but it was at a Pan-African spirit. It was. A, and, also, and also, Hela Selassie, he formed the Ethiopian World Federation in Harlem to bond with foundational black Americans. That's where the Ethiopian World Federation was founded in Harlem. That's where he went and formed it there with foundational right. Americans. That's and also... And also, uh, Ethiopians and, and uh, Black Americans have started the Abyssinian churches, and there's like 12 now. And in fact, uh, Ethiopia invited a delegation of 200 uh, FBAs in 2011 to do business specifically with FBAs. All right. But I'm looking at, I'm reading this now. The land grants were made for foundational Black Americans. Um, and let me, let me read this. I'm going to read a pack. Halle Selassie formed the Ethiopian World Federation in Harlem and a prepared series of events to bond with African Americans for the Ethiopian culture before announcing the land grants. While one of the female members of the EWF was visiting Jamaica, she leaked the information about the land grants with the people of Jamaica. The land grants were specifically intended for African Americans in return for intervening in favor of the royal family during the Second World War. All right. Go get the book called The Ethiopian World Federation, a Pan-African Organization among Rastafari in Jamaica, 2013. Google what I just said. Sir, you don't don't sit here lying. They you just put the misinformation. That, that, that was, was that, no that quote you just read was from 1948, not that 1932. It was not for Jamaicans. The land you just, was not for Jamaicans. It was for read, us. That quote you just read was for uh, 1948. That wasn't the land... For FBAs. I'm talking about 1932. You're conflating the two. So are they lying with this quote? Are they lying? I, what I'm saying is you're reading some misinformation. Okay. Because okay. What are they? So they're lying. So this is from a pretty credible source. This is from um, a book called the Ethiopian World Federation. So is this book lying? Whatever you said wasn't true. Okay. Well, well, well prove it. And what's your source? <laughs> What do you mean? My, the government is my source. No, it's not. That's no, no. What do you mean the government is your source? That don't make no sense. What's your source? I'm reading sources of what they were saying at the time that this land was for foundational black Americans. They Somebody made a mistake and leaked the information to the damn Jamaicans. Then they flooded over there. It wasn't for no Jamaican. Why would Holly Selassie set aside land for Jamaicans? Uh, in 1948, because the. Um, Why? That, I told you it was out of Pan African spirit. No, 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 no. And they didn't have a Pan-African spirit like that in Jamaica. 
They didn't have a pan. That's why Pan-Africanism failed in Jamaica with Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey didn't even get Pan-Africanism popping in Jamaica. Marcus Garvey had to come to the damn United States to get it popping. What you talking about, a pan-African spirit? They heard, okay, foundational black Americans about to get something. Well, damn it, let us go over there and get it first. That's what that was about. Let me get Brother McCall in here. Let me get Brother McCall in here. Brother McCall. Brother McCall. Hop in, sir. Unmute your microphone, Brother McCall. And I can, I can show you all the black Americans that went over there. How you doing, brother? Oh, just living the dream and winning. Absolutely. Wyndham May, Salam, no done or duck. Wyndham May. Wyndham May, Salam, no done or duck. I think he's trolling. Okay, he's he's not Ethiopian. I'll land. Okay, thank you. Thank you, brother. Uh, oh, oh. What? Isn't this motherfucker said Donald Duck? What do you say? Oh, so damn. I think he was speaking in your, your language, and I guess you didn't understand what he was saying. Do you actually speak Ethiopian African Prime? Or, or whatever the language I, is over there? Well, I speak to gray language, not. Uh, he's he, he, he's, he's uh, talking about like I'm hiring language. I speak to gray. To gray. Okay. Got it. Got it. Uh, let, me, let me get my brother Sage in here. My brother Sage want to chime in. Sage, what's up, brother? He thought he ate, though. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. What's up, Sage? Brother Sage, where you at? Sage, 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 where you at, brother? All right, let's get Greg nice. Peace to the room. I want to read something to the brother African Pride. Uh, it's coming out of the, uh, the U.S. Air Force Expeditionary Center. Um, this is an article about our good brother John Robinson and your contention that he didn't uh, become the chief. The chief now. The chief is the head, if I'm not mistaken. Tariq, am I correct? The chief is the absolute top, right? That's correct. And this That's was right. never my point, right? This was never my point to begin so, with. My, I, I'm going to, hey, Tariq, if you, if you could uh, work with me for a second, I'm going to read a quote. Go ahead, brother. Out of this. Uh, uh, this brother right here, John, he finds it challenging to get a job in the U.S. because of his race. He was personally, personally invited by the emperor of Ethiopia to join the Ethiopian Air Force as a colonel in the midst of troubled times for the African country. Last quote. He was quickly promoted to chief of the Ethiopian Air Force and helped turn the tide of the war when Italy invaded Ethiopia with superior weapons and aircraft in 1935. Oh. I end my submission with that. Thank you, Brother Tariq. I appreciate the time. Thank you so much, brother. And th that was never my original point. Like that was a secondary thing that you brought up that you try to contest. But, but, you, but like, you kept saying like, the land. You, were, you, you kept saying like they the FBAs didn't really do anything significant and all that. You keep that's kind of been your argument. Really, I, I, I never said I never implied that at all. Uh, you what do you think? What, what are you doing? I, I never said that. Sir, you you have. You like making it seem like we didn't do shit. Like it was just some so I just told you the uh, FBA doctor went down there to, you, you, to No, no, you keep trying to minimize it to some pan-african pride or whatever no we went over there and helped dude we went over there helping and we got put up there as the top ranks in the military over there in the um the air force so it wasn't minimal you're trying to minimize let me did get you know again did you know this? he said 1935 i told you fba's got land in 1932 and 1948 it wasn't, it and wasn't no, 1948 was for the Rosses, but I'm saying no, it 1930. Wasn't. It wasn't. 19, they went over. They, they just they flooded the zone once they heard that was going to be for us. 1935, that, John Robinson became a colonel. That's after he was. They were given land, so it wasn't because uh, a thank you because we needed help. It was it was at Pan African Spirit, like I said. Now, if if he became a colonel in 1920, I read in 1948 the same thing. They were giving land. To more black Americans as a thank you. 
it was a return favor for support. I can, I can, it, it, Twitter I'm, doesn't looking at, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at several sources saying this. So I'm going to Who believe did? the sources over you, brother. There's several sources saying this. I, I, I can drop the information, but. All right. There's several sources saying this, sir. Uh, but go ahead. Go ahead. Um, brother McHale, what's happening? Yes, sir. I said Windermay first. And most Tigrayans speak Amharic. You're not Tigrayan. You don't speak Amharic. I didn't say I was Tigrayan. I said I'm Tigrayan. You did say you, did say you were Tigrayan, you sir. You the mic, bro. I, I, know, I, I know the Tigrayan <laughs> people very well. I know the Romo people was... very well. I know them hard people very well. Sir, you are from the Caribbeans. I know you very well. And you're lying. I didn't think I didn't say and I was to grain. You are a liar. You said you are to grain. You said you speak to grain. You're not grain. listening. You're not listening you so are you from the Caribbean, sir. Tariq, this man is a fraud. I'm going to land. They keep saying, look, look, Tariq, you keep African saying, I'm, you keep African, saying pride, African pride, African pride, African pride. Are you from the Caribbean, brother? No, nah, this this weirdo keeps saying I'm to grain. I never said I'm to grain. I said I'm to gray. That's how dumb this motherfucker is, man. <laughs> okay. Like, yo, get off mute. Look, can he respond? Get off mute and respond, Mikhail. You sound like a dumb motherfucker, oh, man. Okay. What do you got? Okay, so he said you're Caribbean. All right. I just told him I'm from I'm I'm Tigray. He's saying he got it confused with Tigrayan. That's how little he knows about our politics. Okay, wait. Well, what's the difference? We we don't speak the same language. What's the difference between a Tigray and a Tigrayan? Language. How so? Tigrayans speak Tigrinya. Like Eritreans speak Tigrinya. Tigrays speak Tigray language. Uh, Amharic people speak Amharnia. We speak different languages, but this dumb motherfucker <laughs> doesn't know shit, thinks he knows everything. I wish he'd get off me and say something. No, no, he's not on. He's not on. It's just us talking. But yeah, you, yeah, I mean, you do kind of have a way of saying things that ain't true. So you know, a lot of your, your narratives are going to be questioned, even when there's facts being presented to you. I, the, the, other callers are calling up, reading facts. I've read documented facts. Uh, nope, that's wrong information. Uh uh, that uh, well, no, but my my, my whole point calling up was saying that. You got to come with some some scholarship, brother. Brother Sage, on, let me get Sage in. My brother Sage is trying to say some Sage. I see Miss Djibouti. Oh, we got the. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna get your fellow, um, Horn of African in in a minute. Sage, what's up, brother? Yes, brother. Okay, again, on Adam Clayton Powell in New York, you do realize that we have a mural of the names of the people that went against the United States government by going over to Ethiopia and helping out when they needed help. So, um, and also when you're talking about the majesty of Haile Selassie, the only reason why he got that title of the majesty of Haile Selassie is because of his quote unquote, her winning the war. Well, he didn't win, but him standing up to Italy. And that happened because the foundation of black Americans went over there to help him. Had we not helped him, there would not be any Italy, excuse me, there would not be any Ethiopia today, sir. Right. So I don't understand. That was after the invasion. That was not prior to the invasion. I don't understand sir. what you're saying. There was, sir, Mussolini, <laughs> sir, when Mussolini came over there with the black shirt, sir, you guys were getting wiped out, sir. It was my people, my family that went over there felt sorry for you and helped you fight back, sir. And yes, John Robinson was the commander of the Air Force. You guys only had 50 planes, sir. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about, sir? You only had 50 planes. And he commanded all 50, sir. Do you realize we lost the war, right? That's I'm not talking my about problem. The first my problem war, is that you were able to one. fight the war because of us. You're talking about the, I don't care about you losing. That you're talking about the first war that, that was back in the day that you had nothing a part of. What are you talking about? We're talking we're about talking, the second war where we lost. We're talking about World War II, sir. Yes, the war we lost. But you okay, didn't get sir. The, you were able to continuously fight that war because we went over there going against no, our government. No, no, we, we got demolished because of their superior army quickly. No, sir, sir, sir. What what so, we're saying is that we're not saying that you won the war. We know Haile Selassie fled. We're not saying that he did not flee. Yes, he did. 
but we're saying that you were able to continuously fight the war for three years because of us, sir. You would have got wiped out in a couple of months. If not, um, FBA participation was there, obviously, right? Yes, but it was it it, it was inconsequential. So oh. I don't know why. What's the point? Okay, you saying it What's was the point to keep arguing about that? Let's get Wani. Let me get my sister Wani in here. Wani, I mean, hi, Tariq. We already acknowledged that. You know what I mean? Hey, beloved. Um, hi, hi Tariq. I never heard so many lies in my life. The man was a commander of the Ethiopian Airlines Air Force, founded the airlines in Ethiopia, co-founded. We were given land. The Jamaicans took it. He's a national hero. We bigged up Ethiopia. That's why it was popular. We bigged up Nelson Mandela, had T-shirts on. That's why he's popular. Ethiopia does not have any sway to make anything popular. So you didn't give us any shine. We gave you shine. And you told a lot of lies up here. We were misguided Pan-Africanists. Jamaicans leached off the land, squatted on it, didn't build it up. We went against our government to do this. We were told not to go over there. We fought Italian Americans in the streets. We marched in the major cities, tens of thousands of people. So don't ever tell us that we didn't do something because we took apartheid down and we staved off the Italians. And we should never do anything like that again because this is the thanks we get. Mm, mm. Thank you so much, Sister Wani. Mm. Man. How, how, how does Ethiopia not give you shine when the, the northern hub of the Underground Railroad was called the Abyssinian House? Make that make sense. But y'all didn't do anything to help us on the Underground Railroad, so what you talking about? An Ethiopian didn't have a goddamn thing to do with the Underground Railroad whatsoever. That was us exclusively fighting for ourselves, sir. But we still gave. I'm talking about, I'm talking about being the, the the symbol of freedom and hope for all black people. Yeah, well, we were the we were the ones fighting for symbols and hopes and getting freedom for all black people. We were the ones doing that. All right, Tariq, let me ask you a question then. What what's, freedom what, and hope did we get from Ethiopia? No, no, no. Let's be real. What freedom and hope did we get from Ethiopia? I mean, aren't you aware of the Harlem Renaissance? How Ethiopia is mentioned thousands of times? Yeah, you, yeah, know, yeah. you know that, right? Yeah, we, we'd always shout Africa out. We'd shout the Caribbean out. We we shouted uh, Marcus Garvey out. Come on, Marcus Garvey, you black. And he, come on, let's just join us. We'll rock with your movement. We shouted everybody out who was black. We were the ones keeping the drum beat of that going, sir. That was us. Even um, even the black loyalists uh, that went to Canada, when they got shipped out to fight wars in Europe, they renamed themselves the Ethiopian Regiment. Oh, like, like that's, the- that's how much shine Ethiopia had at, at that time. No, but I want to ask you a question, right? No, no, stop it. No, no, because Ethiopia was the name that they used for all of Africa at one point. They were calling all of Africa Ethiopia at one point. So Ethiopia. That's not true. That's not true, bro. You you are saying so many lies. It is true. It is true. That is true. No, Ethiopia. True. They were called, nah, that, they, all of Africa was called Ethiopia at one point. In fact, the Atlantic Ocean was called the Ethiopian Sea at one point, sir. Don't tell me that's, that. That's, 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 a mis- that's a misinformation, right? Because misinformation. Ethiopia, Ethiopia uh, comes all from the Gita. Called Ethiopia at one point. That's why when they came over here, when the Europeans came over here and saw black skinned people, they wrote down, they looked like some of the people from Ethiopia. They weren't talking about the country over there in East Africa. They were talking about Africa as a whole. This is very well documented. Go ahead, African Pride. Boy, you, what are the lies, boy? That ain't true. Well, let me. Give me, you let me explain real quick. You told me it ain't true, and you can look up old maps where it says Ethiopia. <laughs> this is, that ain't true. Yeah. Well, the let me explain real quick, lying. right? The map makers uh, were lying. Okay. It, <laughs> because you're looking at it through a lens of a European, right? Uh, oh, okay. Ethiopia. Now, Damn, now, can now, I just talk for like a, two seconds, bro? I, I'm, I'm not even long-winded. You, you kind of explained it. Well, just let me let me just talk real quick. Um, Ethiopia comes from the Giz language. That's our ancient language that broke up into Tigray, Tigrain, and Tigrinya and Amharic. The, uh, Ethiopia means land of gold in Giz. 
So it always meant Ethiopia or Habesha people. It never meant the whole Africa. But you're looking through a European lens as the Greeks referred to everybody as Ethiopians because we were, we, we were the only ones that had something popping. Okay, what? no. At one point, Greeks had nothing, nothing popping, so they called us all. Right. This is what I'm saying. At one point, certain Europeans, they would just kind of refer to all of Africa as Ethiopia. They would just call it Ethiopia. That was kind of a catch-all term in some instances. Right, black, but that's through a European lens. It, it doesn't mean it's true. Now, I'm talking about matter, facts. It doesn't matter if it's a European lens or not. I'm just saying how a lot of people would refer to all of Africa as Ethiopia. And even us over here, Some we would name certain things the Ethiopian dandies or something like that. Just right, referring to but that, Africa, mean, that doesn't mean West just, Africa. Just referring to Africa as a whole. Just right, I, that's, that's the Africa. lens. The lens. I'm talking about reality that West Africans aren't Ethiopian, South Africans aren't Ethiopian, but Greeks refer to everybody as Ethiopian because we, we we had the only thing popping at the time. But that doesn't mean that they're Ethiopian. That's what I'm saying. So Ethiopia means land of gold. I mean, uh, uh yeah, land of gold in our ancient Gies language. So it, it's it's our, you know, it, it means us specifically. Okay, I'm not talking about just, I know what the, the etymology is. I'm just saying certain people refer to it as um, Ethiopia. And they, the Atlantic Ocean at one point was called the Ethiopian Sea. This is well documented. Yeah, the Europeans called it that. We didn't call it that. We, uh, didn't, we didn't call it, and West Africans didn't call it that. Okay. South Africans didn't call it that. that that's what I'm saying. And you keep saying it's on a, it's from a European lens. Yeah. That was the name. And either the, the name Ethiopia, that was recently given by Haile Selassie for that country. That country wasn't called Ethiopia. That's not the ancient name of that country. No, we had a lot of different names. Right. right. So the names change. So, yeah, the names become interchangeable. The names change over centuries and years. They mean different things. So, yeah, you can't say that Ethiopia was for that country in ancient times because there was no, the country wasn't called Ethiopia at the time, sir. I mean, ancient times, we ruled uh, Egypt and the Middle East. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, so I... Okay. It is, it is. Okay. All right. All right, African pride. All right. Thank you. All right, All right Thank brother. You. Have a good night. All right. Good freaking grief, man. Boy, this is a uh, family. Everything I said, can y'all please look it up? Everything that I said, it's so deeply verified. It's it's so heavily verified, everything that I said. Nope. Uh-uh. That's misinformation. No, no, it ain't. No, it ain't. Man, this dude was lying his ass off. For the record, a foundational black American, John Robinson. And look, when when foundational black Americans realized that they saw that Italy was trying to colonize Ethiopia, we didn't want that to happen. We stood up for for Ethiopia. We said, hey, that that can't happen. We got to stand up for Abyssinia. We got to stand up for them. We were lining up fighting against our own government here because they didn't want us joining up with them to help them fight. We were lining up all over the country to kind of get over there and fight. And the government was telling us, do not go over there and help. We still went over there. John Robinson, he built his own plane and went over there and rose up in the ranks and taught them how to correctly fly their planes. They had a handful of planes that they didn't know what to damn do with. They didn't know what to do. That's why they're getting their asses whooped. We kept that colonizer off the, their bumper. We did that, ladies and gentlemen. And then look at the thanks. And and, and again, Haley Selassie had that land. He allocated land for Foundation of Black Americans. It was specifically for us as a thank you for helping them out. And then the Jamaicans heard about it. It leaked to them. And then they rushed over there. These are documented facts, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get this person, 24 Cal. 24 Cal in here. Because you're raising your hand, so let's see what you got to say. Hey, Tariq, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. I uh, just wanted to point out a few lies. This person, um, African Pride, was completely lying and bullshitting because 
um, he tried to claim to grind, and Mikhail was right. He caught him right right away. Um, no to grind will sit here and big up um, Haile Selassie because that genocide, genocidal maniac, when our people were fighting him, he got chased out all the way to the UK and he had to go and lick the Queen's ass to get some bombs and some planes mm. to, drop on our, to, to drop on our people. So he trying to claim to grind, that's completely bullshit. And about uh, John Robinson, that's a complete fact and that's well known in um in, uh, in our region in Tigray. It's well known and respected. And also, um, when Haile Salati was um, starving our people intentionally, um, a man-made famine, it was foundational black Americans like Michael Jackson who were fundraising and um, right, like donating to our people, to feed our people there. So we always respect foundation black American contribution to our people, man. That's all I want yes, to say. Indeed. That guy's alive. Yeah. My man, I appreciate you, man. That's what we're talking about, man. Just hella simple. Thanks. Damn. That's what I don't like. We man, we we put in work for them, man. And for this dude, oh no, y'all didn't y'all didn't really do nothing. The hell we didn't. We risked our lives going over there to help y'all asses, man. This is why cats are on these tethers bumpers now. With that damn disrespect. Y'all be over there eating ravioli right now if it weren't for foundational black Americans stepping in and getting them colonizers off your bumper, man. Come on. Man, the disrespect. But shout out to the last caller. Shout out to him. Where's Miss Djibouti? I saw her pop her head up in here. Where's Miss Djibouti? Miss Djibouti, you in here? Where's she at? Where you at, Miss Djibouti? Okay, let's get um Mohid Mohid Rehan. Let's get Mohid Rehan. Then we'll get trust. Um, then we'll get Raina. We'll get a lot of folks popping. Then we'll get Brother Najee. So let's go with Mohid Rehan. Mohid Rehan. All right. Let's get it going fast. Let's get it going fast. All right. Let's try Trust. Trust, where you at? All right. Trust ain't doing nothing. Let's try Raina. Good evening, family. I, I was just inspired up here by by the dude that uh, was suggesting that Black Americans never did anything and that Haile Selassie set aside land for Jamaicans, Rastafarians. I posted in the chat uh, about the one and only time that Haile Selassie visited Jamaica, which was a turning point for the Rastafarian religion. Right, because they view him as a god. Yes, literally. And oh, yeah. based on the stories I've heard, right, at the time they the one and only time he visited Jamaica, they had gone through a prolonged drought, no rain for a long time. Yeah, and when his plane landed on the tarmac, it started raining. Yeah, and they thought that was a sign from God, yeah. Right. So I, I'm i confused as to how there would be a notion that he set aside land in Ethiopia for Jamaicans prior to the development of the Rastafarian religion that made him a god. Right. And yeah, I, that's why I asked the guy, why would he set aside land for Jamaicans? For what? They didn't do anything. Why would he do that? And, and the guy couldn't really answer. So, yeah, very interesting narrative. Very interesting. We got Miss Djibouti. Thank you, dear. Miss Djibouti, what's happening, Miss Djibouti? Hi, Tariq. How are you? I'm good, Miss Djibouti. Where you been hiding? I've um, just been around, you know, being a good girl. There you go. So what's on your mind? So um, what do you think about foundational black Africans? Um, foundational to what? If you're not even there, you got to be there to be foundational. to. Yeah. Them. Like, you know, the ones that are still have ties, the one that live back home, like me that are in Africa right now. Well, you would be a foundational Ethiopian. Or no, foundational I'm, from, I'm not from Ethiopia. Oh, Somalia. You're from Somalia, right? No, no, I'm from Djibouti. Oh, God, for, that's right. That would be a name. Yeah, so, yeah, you're a foundational Djiboutian. Yeah, right? black. Yeah, black. Yeah, But y'all, But a lot of you guys don't really use the black moniker. You guys don't consider yourselves black. You, you, 
you kind of go by your nation, which is good. That's fine. Somalis don't. You, you do what? And you need to get a foundation or better phone. That's what you need to get. But, but. Do you know that? Do you know that Somali? Come on, Djibouti. Your phone is janky, dear. Djibouti, Djibouti, what's up with your phone, dear? Okay, you, you can't Andrew be delivered. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Can you hear me? I can hear you a little bit. You, you're you going under a bridge while you're delivering your order. But yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. So I'm saying, do you know the difference between Djibouti and Somalia? Yeah, I know. There is a difference. What's the difference? I, I, I don't know the, the particular differences, but I know there it's different regions. Yeah, so we were colonized by the French. They were colonized in two parts, in the south by Italy and in the north by Britain. Right. But we're still ethnic Somalis, different tribes, but we have, you know, different uh, colonizations, right? So, but yeah, um, I have a question. I wanted to just address the white man that came earlier on the stage. Um, Mikhail? He's not white. I spoke to his... I spoke to his maid and, and his driver. Yeah. So Amarnia is... Okay, let me talk to Amarnia, to the Ethiopians in the space. Okay. And then Oromo. Okay, we don't know what... And then Somali. We gotta slow that down because a bunch of cats just walked to my door right now. So I don't know what language that is, but you've drew, you've drawn you're drawing no, I, you're drawing cats to I spoke in Arnia. Okay, you're drawing cats to my house. They're looking here and they're looking scared like somebody's about to cook them. So don't talk like that. I don't know what that is, man. Um yeah, you gotta we, we gotta understand what's going on with you. And I don't, I don't know what you're saying. I don't know if you're. So I spoke in Amarnia, I spoke in Oromo, and I spoke in Somali as well. Oh. And I'll speak in Arabic. Kif halik tamam. Got it. Yeah, well it. There you go. But to shuf, huh? Okay. Thank, thank you so much, dear. Thank you, Mr. Booty. All right. Now I don't know what she's talking about. We don't know the beginnings of rap. Because as long as our music has been recording, people have been rapping. The disco DJs separated themselves from us. We were the next generation coming up with this thing and they were like, what's this little hippity hop thing? The first time I heard somebody spit a 16 over a break beat was probably Melly Mel. The Melly Mel sound that you hear today, I got that sound from Hollywood. I was doing the same form of entertainment long before it had a name. A lot of the gangs were fading out by the time hip hop came in. A lot of those gangs turn into crews. As far as influencing hip hop, I saw no Puerto Rican or Jamaican influences whatsoever. I started breakdancing in 70. When rap and hip hop was all black, it was negative. Now that it became a big phenomenon and corporately acceptable, now there's this need to take foundation of black Americans out of the creation of it and give it away to other people. And it's important for us to set the record straight.